I would never have found out that my sister is in a camp without this list. It's a detailed surveillance document. It's extremely likely that this is authentic. Yes, it's dangerous, but someone should tell the world what's going on there. Istanbul. These men are Uyghur Muslims from China. Back home, they could be imprisoned for the simple act of praying. I quickly come to realize that each one of them has a story of loss. The fascist Chinese government wants to eliminate the Uyghur people of Xinjiang, the entire population of Xinjiang, right in front of the eyes of the world. We ask them to raise their hands if they have family members who've been imprisoned in China's Xinjiang province, where most Uyghurs live. Across Xinjiang, there are dozens of camps holding up to a million Uyghurs. Let's take a closer look at one of them. This is a re-education camp next to a prison. We identified watchtowers and high walls. There are countless camps like this one. The Chinese government claims they are voluntary vocational training centers designed to fight Uyghur extremism. Two. But we received a document which shows that China is targeting Uyghurs based on their identity and religion. It lists hundreds of detainees and the reasons for their detention. Posted, uh, Uyghur academic Abdulwili Ayup received it from a source and took a huge risk sharing it with us. January 8th, I received the phone call, like it's, it's messenger call, and uh, he said that stop doing this and we can reach you wherever you are. Yes, it's dangerous, but someone should take the danger. Someone should speak up. Someone, someone should tell the world what's going on there. Analyze his... The document doesn't have any stamp or signature. We showed it to several experts who agreed that it is almost certainly an official text. It contains an enormous amount of extremely specific um, uh, data from one a uh, very small community in, in Xinjiang, and that um, it would take an immense amount of effort and access to publicly unavailable data to fabricate a document like this. In this neighborhood in Istanbul, where many Uyghurs live, we met one woman whose sisters are mentioned on the list. Utsiniza Tohdi knew some family members had been imprisoned, but it shocked her when she found out that her youngest sister was listed in the document. I was really sad. For days, I couldn't sleep. I was really shocked and sad about her arrest. China says it's fighting extremism, but Tohti says her younger sister wasn't religious. Her only crime, she had too many children. I heard that the conditions in prison are unimaginably bad. They don't even have enough food to eat. She doesn't know if her relatives have been released. Like countless other Uyghurs, they have been caught up in China's all-encompassing anti-terrorism drive. And that report by Naomi Conrad from DW's investigative unit. And Naomi is here with me. A very disconcerting um, revelations. This document was leaked to DW News. Walk us through some of the steps that you took to verify the authenticity of uh, this document. 
Sure. So we, arrived, uh, we received some 140 pages in Chinese, a PDF document with no seal or stamp. So the first thing we did, obviously, was translate some of it to figure out what this was actually about. Um, then we showed it to several of the leading experts on, on Uyghur history, on Uyghur politics. It all said it was most likely authentic. Uh, a lot of what is in this list um, correlates with what we've heard already. Uh, the next step was to try and find relatives, because obviously we couldn't travel to Xinjiang, we couldn't get hold of people there because it's impossible to contact people that in itself will put them in danger so we managed to find some of the relatives I talked to some of the relatives of these people on the list um, and then what we also did is that we looked at several of the camps that are mentioned in the list so these people are sent to re <laughs> the so-called re-education camps we managed to verify them using governmental Chinese governmental bids um, also satellite images so we're pretty sure that we verified two of the camps and most likely located two other of the camps so we are pretty sure that this is an authentic document. What do we learn about the fate of the detainees from this leaked document? So we know that some of the detainees have been released. That doesn't mean that they've been released into freedom. It means that they're still heavily controlled, monitored. Um, some, some of them probably can't move around freely. I mean, there's a whole network of surveillance in Xinjiang. Um, there are surveillance cameras everywhere. Other detainees have been sent to labor camps. Those can be factories within the villages where they're from. They could also be factories in other labour camps. And more worryingly, we've also heard that some people have been sent to prison. So they, even if they have been released from these so-called vocational training camps, they're by no means free at all. I mean, these are very frightening scenes that you describe. Have you been able to get an official reaction from uh, Chinese officials? So we actually managed to talk to the Chinese foreign minister who was in Berlin on a state visit last week, and uh, this is what he said to us. No one has seen any kind of concentration camp in Xinjiang. No one has seen any persecution. The only thing to see was people of various ethnicities in Xinjiang living together harmoniously. These facts demonstrate that the so-called concentration camps, the so-called one million, are 100 percent rumors. They are complete fake news. Fake news. Fake news, uh, Naomi. Complete denial there. Complete denial. But, I mean, that's not surprising. That's what the Chinese authorities have been saying all along. They keep on stressing that these are vocational camps, that uh, people go there voluntarily. So it's not surprising that we didn't get a different kind of response. All right. DW investigative reporter Naomi Conrad, thank you very much.